We finished off our last video with the tree view being populated. It had data in it, and it actually represented the tree, but it doesn't look nice. It doesn't show the information the way that we want. And you can start to see there's draw transform, there's draw text, there's draw rectangle here. But I would like for it to say transform text and rectangle and not this extended name. Normal users don't want to see that. Uh, I'd also like to make it so that we can select items from the tree and then pop up a properties for those. So how are we going to add those things? Well, let's start with one at a time. How do we make it so that things like draw transform show a different string in that? Well, it turns out they are using the method called toString, which is defined on type any. We want to override that. So we can override def toString, which gives back a string. And for the transform, I just want to give back transform. We'll copy that. I want to put that same method inside of a rectangle, and I want to put it inside of the text too. Of course, we're going to change what it displays. And we could come back later if we wanted, once we have some data in here, and make it so it displays something about those. If we go ahead and we run this again, now it just says transform text and rectangle. Okay, excellent. What about when I select these? Well, when I select these things, that is supposed to cause some properties to show up down here. So whatever properties we have on our rectangle, we should be able to set them. That would be things like the X, the Y, the width, the height, probably a color. So we, we need to do a number of things. First, we have to figure out how do we tell when this happens. So we've already seen that we can deal with the menu items by setting an on action. We made it so that new can produce a different drawing for us and we've also made it so that exit exits out. We haven't done the rest of the menu items yet but we can add those at a later point. That was just once again simply set by this on action. Okay, we set the on action value and then we put appropriate code inside of there. How do we deal with selecting things inside of a tree view? So let's come down here and the last thing I do before I set up the tab is I'm going to add my interactivity on the tree. So this is our drawing tree. It has something inside of it called a selection model. Now the selection model is actually called, it's an object property. We'll talk about properties in a few videos, but it is not the selection model itself. It's something that wraps around the selection model. If I want the selection model itself, I have to say dot value. Uh, now what I want to do is I want to make something happen when the selection is changed. So we can come into here and we can go to selected item and that's a, another read only property and the reason why properties are, are used is because we can set up an on change uh, method here. Really, this is a method that we pass a by, by name argument to. So this op is going to be called every time that this is changed. Okay, so what do we do when it's changed? Well, we need to figure out what item was actually selected. So let's go ahead and let's make a variable called selected, which will be drawing tree dot selection model dot value. It's worth noting that in, in addition, Instead of calling dot value, you can also call apply. And remember, apply is done with parentheses. So instead of the dot value, I can just say parentheses, uh, selected item. And then I would want the value of that. And so I could put the parentheses again. It is completely up to you whether you put dot value or invoke the apply with parentheses. I happen to think that the dot value might be slightly less error prone but this one is, is definitely shorter and makes it so people don't wonder why you have dot values all over the place. Uh, it's just if someone leaves out the parentheses thinking that they don't matter because in many places in Scala you can leave off the empty parentheses unless it's invoking apply, which it is here. Okay, now there are two possibilities here. It's possible that the thing that was selected was null. In other words, nothing has been selected. So if nothing's been selected in the tree, 
And it, you can do this by unselecting. So for example, if something's selected and they hold control and click, they will unselect that item. But assuming something, something is selected, then I want to take our uh, property pane, which is a scroll pane here, and I want to set its uh, contents to be the properties of the thing that was selected. And we can technically do selected parentheses. Uh, now, we haven't written this yet, but we'll need to. We need to make it so that all of our drawables have the ability to give us back a property panel. And to do that, we need to come into our trait drawable. Define a properties panel. Uh, our properties panel can just return a node, and this will be <laughs> how about we actually go ahead and Scala FX dot scene dot node instead of doing an import because we're we're not gonna have too much stuff like that in here. Though we will wind up having a drawable, which will also or we need to have a draw method in our drawable, and that will also use something from Scala FX. Um, okay, now if we, let's see, selected dot, what are we unhappy with here? Properties panel is not a member of the object property. That just looks a little bit weird. How about we do dot? get value. Node does not take parameters. Did we make it so that it, okay. So we call the properties panel there. Ah, I didn't put parentheses on this and therefore putting parentheses on there caused problems. Now you'll note here this caused errors in my draw rectangle, my draw text, and, and also in my draw transform. Though that one isn't obvious at this point but it is if I do that. And the reason is because now all of those have to have, because this is an abstract method, they all have to have this method defined inside of them. Let's actually go ahead and in the draw rectangle just to do something here. Um, I'm just going to return a new text field. we'll come back and make that something that is more appropriate, or actually instead of a text field, how about we do a new label that says rectangle. And we'll import the label type. If I hit Control Shift O again, it will get rid of the stuff that I'm not using. And now I can put this inside of draw text and make it say text. You might wonder why I'm doing this. Well, by making each one of them different, when we run the program, we'll actually be able to tell that we are selecting different things and this code is working. If I made it so that they all had exactly the same, uh, if I made it so they all had the exact same graphical representation, we wouldn't be able to tell whether or not things were being selected. Okay, and we come back to our draw main here. This if needs an else. What should happen if they make it so nothing is selected? Well, in that case, I'm actually going to use a label here and I'm going to say nothing selected. So at least we give feedback to the user saying that nothing has been selected there. We need to import our label. Oh, L before S and else. Okay. And if we run this now, we have this. I can expand this open, click there, transform text rectangle. Okay. The key message 
uh, from this video, other than we were able to override some stuff and, and put in some functionality, the most important thing is that when I have these things called properties, like the selected item, most of them have an on change, and that on change takes a single argument that is a by, uh, by name argument. So this code will be executed every time a change happens. So this is another way that is kind of standard to add interactivity to your uh, Scala GUIs. We'll come back and deal with our size problem. Uh, we'll see another way that we can interact with properties because I'm, I'm very unhappy that this tree doesn't get does does not grow or shrink with my uh, with my area here. So we'll look at another way to make these things interactive in the next video.